And now it's time for game two of Blackberry vs. Bungie. It is week four, it is season four of the After Hours Gaming League, where professional people come to play games. The After Hours Gaming League, not only are the um, players the full-time employees of usually tech industries, but that means that they are not full-time gamers. Just playing in weekends, after hours. As much or as little as they can, and since some of them have families, that means uh, very little. But they enjoy themselves when they do play, and that's really what it's all about. This next match is Bungie. In Bungie vs. Blackberry, we have 14 Bungie. Blue Protoss in the bottom right corner. It is double, I believe that he's a one of those plays for fun style players because and that's a good thing because in the other corner top right we have playing for team blackberry the red protoss mob another for fun player and we're going to see a lovely mirror matchup where everything is mirrored look at those builds mmm exactly the same alright Two, three seconds? No, one, one to two seconds advantage for double. I think we can give this game to Bungie already. But yeah, very. This, this is going to be a very mirror game. I feel. We I mean, just look at those scouting paths. It's almost symmetrical. I mean, oh, that's why Mob was delayed. The more aggressive pylon placement. Look at the difference. Look at the difference. Okay, maybe it's not that big a difference. And here we have a probe patrolling. Going to attack any probes who decide to move out of it. No. Oh, not even going near the mineral line. Just checking to see if there are any structures. And does the probe patrol even cause attacks? No. Nope. Just brush right past it. It's a real shame. Otherwise, you could use the patrol to just attack any SCV who tries to build buildings. Looks like someone got in the way. Oh! Gas steel. There we go. Mob trying to get the leg up in these one base all-ins that I love seeing out of Protoss. If you can't have any gas, one on base all-ins are much harder. As that gas deal, no, that's just Mob getting double gas. His opponent can't go get double gas, so clearly Mob will win. Personally, I'm a big fan of if they steal both your gas, you just do a three, two or three gate zealot all-in. And they're gonna go, ah, darn, I delayed my cyber core for gas steals. But no. No, this is not gonna be an all-in. We're just seeing one zealot, he's gonna clear that geyser. And then everything will proceed as normal. Already? <laughs> it's almost like a geyser was stolen, there's an assimilator. No probes, we'll see what Mob's doing, but right now still very, very mirror. Ooh. And there's the other part of the mirror matchup, the five health probes retreating, licking their wounds after being a little too aggressive in the early game shenanigans. Gateways going up for both players. You know, I'm not sure we need to go back to mob space. We can just watch double and assume the same thing's happening on the other side of the map. And the grass is always greener on this side of the map. One of the things I love about Yonsu, such a visually distinct map. Just look at that mini-map there. It's not like it's asymmetrical, of course, it's exactly the same when you cut it in a diagonal line. That doesn't mean it has to look the same. It can still feel like it's the Prince of Spring versus the Goddess of Winter. Or whatever particular pagan beliefs you wish, wish to endorse. Those are our pagan beliefs. And there's again the probes fighting it out in the center of the map. Gas Steel finally going down after he's got Three gates and warp gate research. Hmm, that that's exactly the same as over here. Never mind. So, I don't know PvP quite well enough to know if this means all-in or if it means defense against an all-in. Because really, it's the only way to survive if they're going to three gate you is to have your own gates plus the ramp. Such a weird matchup. But all the mirror matchups are like that. They all have their quirks. 
ZVZ is just crazily aggressive. TVT takes three hours minimum. And PvP involves warp gates. So, yeah, so hard to pick. We can see already that Mob does want to be aggressive. Look at that pylon placement. The forward stalker. And with that army all the way back here, nothing. Maybe he can even take out the Nexus before it turns into a gigantic cannon. No? Okay, just backing up. I mean, one stalker versus two. Quite reasonable. Bringing in his own militia corps. Bringing in the pylon. It's ready. Where are we? We've got warp gate. We've got warp ins. Let's see what he can do with this. And yeah, zealots mixing in for double. Not really sure how that works with great micro. Really, the st bigger stalker count is going to mean victory here for mob. But this is this is not the great micro league. This is the after hours gaming league. Anything can happen. Literally anything. He can walk right up here, snipe the probe, and fall back. No. He can just take it. He's gonna stand there and take it. No, he's gonna lose a stalker and mass recall all the way home. I like it. The only problem though is that now no energy. Where's the giant cannon gonna come into? This is exactly how you hold this. <laughs> Without a giant cannon, looks like he might just sack his expansion. Well, we've got the Robox facility, but there's nothing coming out of it just yet. And look at that stalker count. We've got seven to three. Mothership core with no shields isn't going to change that. Focusing down the Nexus. Is, does he think he's Pult? <laughs> well, it is a nice tactic. Just needs to position that Stalker better. And I think he's going to get the Nexus. It really, Double just can't engage. Not with that forward pylon like that. Not with this big advantage of Stalker count. Until that Immortal comes out, Double is on the back foot. And he's going to try and hold it with Zealots. I think he has a chance now. He's got the Immortal and Zealots mob. Still a bigger army, but not quite enough. Is he going to try and take out this pylon? It's right there. Right there. No? Okay. Yes. Excellent. Now, what, how would Edgar own pace? I, I do like how, you know, denying your opponent's natural, expanding behind the stalker of the mobility could eat. Don't have to take this fight if they don't want to. Mob is clearly ahead at this juncture. He needs to get a little out of all stalkers though. Mortal counts getting up. Double can hold his vein here I feel. But Mob just needs to sit back, enjoy his economic advantage, which even has translated to probes by now. With that with that natural denied. You know, this game should be mobs. But it's never over till it's over. And Double's going for it. I don't know, I think he can take this. Ooh, Snipes and Motion Core, very good. Stalkers will now have to run back using their superior speed. There's another Motion Core down. But he's not going to engage. I don't think he can make it, not with the two Immortals there. And just, you know, running back and having his, uh, defending Photon Cannon. Hmm, well, there are a lot of things that can protect against. Three Immortals, though. Now's the time to definitely get those Sentries. Maybe even some Zealots. I build Zealots, but but that's because I don't play Protoss. Because I really want Zerglings whenever I see Immortals, and Zealots are like really fat Zerglings that are slow and waddle. Good scout there with that by Double. He's got the pylon. Probably saw it when he took that Watchtower earlier, actually. But very nice cleaning that up. And then pushing slowly forward. It would be nice to see him get an Observer out of that Robotics Bay. Then he could just know everything, and he'd be fine. But... Eh, knowing everything's overrated. May as well, your Protoss, you may as well use your psionic powers, your game sense to just guess at what the opponent's doing. And you'll never guess Void Rays. Because, <laughs> who does that, really? Void Rays are coming. I do like that. Ah, going up the rocks. I'll never expect that. The Immortal is actually really great at putting these rocks. This could catch him a little unprepared. But if he has his giant cannon, oh, not quite. Not quite. Needs a force field and delay, I feel. Eh, no real need to force field. Just scare him. Both posturing, flexing their stalker muscles in front of each other. And yeah, Double's not going for it. 
He's not going for it. The Void Ray might have scared him. It's not that much anti-air. And the Void Ray really can do a number on those mortals. Um, now, though, he's got the mana. He can always just use the giant cannon. And I feel that the double has lost his window of opportunity. It's okay. He's just going to expand again. Very bold. Bold expansion. Oh, well. Mom, how's that worker lead going? It is actually still going. Very nice. He's going to have a short period of time to have that economic lead, and we'll see if he decides to attack then. He just is massing his void rays. That is all you need unit comp wise. Clearing out his own rocks. Well, he is expanding there. A bit bold. Maybe he just likes the symmetry of the map. And finally, we're seeing an observer. I'm very happy to see an observer. Always felt a little overpowered to me. The Protoss get a flying cloak scout. That's, you know, a, a little too powerful in scouting-wise, but they don't use it, so it's okay. And here's Mob taking his third slightly later. I think we're back to a kind of mirror matchup. We do have Phoenix coming in to try and shoot down the Void Rays, and I don't really know who has the effectiveness there. Um, I mean, Void Rays don't do their bonus damage. Phoenix don't do their bonus damage. Uh, if you have like armor or shield upgrades, it's probably going to go to whoever has those. They're both very fast attack, low individual damage units. I mean, there is the Phoenix possibility of kiting, but you need the range upgrade before you actually outrange Void Rays, so I don't see the Fleet Beacon going down just yet. Both getting shield upgrades. Looks like they're both going to focus on cannons and they get the cannon upgrades. Or maybe it's just when you bring in air. I never see it happen in a high level game, but when you're adding some air to your Protoss army, it just feels so efficient to be, oh, I'm getting some shield upgrades. That'll benefit everything. Nice attempt to warp prison harass. I do like the idea. The problem is <laughs> then you attack move and they hit the cannon. Good cannon placement by mom. Got one in every mineral line and just sort of distracts. Also, it's great versus DTs, which you really should have seen by now. This is 16 minutes into a PvP. Photon cannon. More void rays. Looks like we're going for almost identical compositions. Just a few more mortals here, a few more void rays there. I would normally give it to the guy with more void rays, so still mobs having his favorite. Fleet Beacon. Yes, Fleet Beacon for the 2-2 air upgrades seems clearly clear to me. And a third Stargate. We are going to have Sky Toss against Immortals. I do hope he keeps building Immortals. Yes, there we go. That's going to be the sixth Immortal. I mean, by this point, you may as well go to Colossus because the armies are big enough that splash damage is more important. But, you know, the Stalkers on the ground are the only thing that can threaten his Void Rays. So there you go. You win the ground battle with Immortals, Void Rays of the rest. But way more Void Rays. And now, the armies pass in the night. No, he's actually going to move back. Is he? Mob has all the vision. He can see this. He's just waiting right there inside of the Watchtower. Might not have been the best choice. And here it comes. Alright, Void Rays. Prismatic alignment from Mom, but not double. Excellent start. Oh, and I think of those Void Rays are just too much. I don't know what was tanking for them, but that's all they needed. Let's see if the count goes down from six Immortals. Couple of Stalkers, not quite enough. Ooh. Warp Prism Micro or Failed Follow Command? You decide. And there go the Void Rays picking off everything. Looks like we'll get almost half the Immortals, all the Stalkers, the Void Raids, the Mothership Core. And all he needs now is to just take his Wind Rays and win. Pushing forward, we've got one Void Ray for double. Trying to hold, about ready to hold this. Another on the way. Mothership Core dead means no giant cannon. But looks like they're just going to move out and take out the third. The third, th this must be his mining third. It's where he's got his 35 workers. Double finally caught up on probe count. But doesn't have any faces to put them at. Ooh. Wrong time to transfer. 
And Void Rays versus Stalkers. I'm still betting on the Void Rays. But actually, those Void Rays from Double might just turn the tide here. Or not. No, it's still Void Rays conquer all. Except when you warp in too many Stalkers. Good target fire there. I think Double has repelled this. But he doesn't think so. He's just going to back off. You know, wait for more Stalkers. In the meantime, we're seeing something interesting back here from Mob. More Void Rays starting to... No? Sorry, I thought I saw him switch to Tempest. There it is. Tempest Void Ray. The new OP. And there we go. Phoenix Stalker. Overwhelming numbers. These Void Rays left to themselves. Probably should have been building and reinforcing, but who has time these days? And there's the probe transfer. I uh, know, still t roughly two base to two base in terms of active units. I uh, know, double probably has enough. Building immortals from mob. Hmm. Maybe he just saw his enemy's unit composition and said, Hey, that looks good. I'll have some of that. It is a mirror matchup. He does have an advantage. He can. <laughs> When you have an advantage in mirror matchup, you can just build the same as your opponent, but more, and win. But no, he's not going to do that. Is this the new... Oh, I, I also thought that was the new changeling. Just send a stalker up into the opponent's army, and they won't notice that it's not their stalker. But no, they finally stopped move command. Just poking around there, not sure what for. Posturing. No, he doesn't want to take that fight. Three Tempests. Okay. Now, as I understand PvP, which I probably don't, Tempests are there to counter Carriers and Colossi, but if Double just sticks on the Stalker Immortal Mixture, uh, Tempests aren't exactly any good at all against Stalkers. Really, you just want Void Rays, and in fact, the fa he, he switched to Dark Shrine, okay? That's fine. I mean, the <laughs> you can't really go wrong with a Dark Shrine. Not 22 minutes. You've, you've explored every other tech option. Let's just check for any remaining vulnerabilities. And yeah, there's a fourth. There's the Dark Templar. Wait. Wait, Dark Templar and he's building a Dark Shrine? You can never have too many Dark Shrines, I suppose. <laughs> okay, so d after that double expand, one base taken out. Army with no Observer. Runs away from the Phantom Menace. Still no Observer. Mm. You know, you could press on. Okay, backup Dark Shrine within Eyeshot. Losing the ability to produce Dark Templars is just just too much to bear. These cases. And it does. There we go. Double's building and more Observers now. The window for Dark Templar attacks has passed, and they've all just. Come over here to join the main army. I really feel he could have done more with those Dark Templar. Just sent some to every base. There are no cannons. There were no observers. Could have killed every single pro, but no. No, that's how sissies play. Instead, we want Archons. Archon Tempest versus Stalkers and Immortals. Let's see. We've got, what, six Archons? Three Tempests with more on the way. And he's going to be able to punish this army in some ways. There we go. Can't just retreat. Can't just stand there while the Tempests attack. But the Tempests are having trouble catching up. They're real flying. Oh, they're not caught up. You really want to take this fight? Ugh. Good positioning here by Double. Got the ramp. The Tempests now, though, in range. Might want to fall back. No time warp. Could have time warp. Waiting for the prismatic alignment to fade out, maybe? Oh, and there's the Tempest in the wrong position. Tempest too far forward, trying to dance, but no, Stalker's right up on top. So many Stalkers. Archon stuck in the back lines, and there's a big win for Double. I mean, screw the compositions. That was just a good engagement by Double there. Baited his opponent into bad position. Now he's taking out all of these Tempests that just cannot compete with Stalkers. And what does Mob have back home? It's going to be more Tempests. Okay. And some Stalkers. He's got some misrallied units here that he could also pull in. I, 
I really feel that his only mistake this entire game was not was stopping to build Void Rays. If you continue to build Void Rays, you're safe. But Tempests just not working out. His opponent stuck to that composition for the Mass Stalkers, and you know that that seems to have worked. Definitely working against Tempest. Probably wouldn't have worked against Void Rays in large numbers. Could have just kept building Dark Templar. Now that he has the Observer, of course, that's not going to work so well. There we go. Dark Templar not quite working, but those Observers work quite late from double. Ooh, forward blink, catching those Tempests. And yeah, may, might have anticipated a tech switch from starting with Immortals. It's very easy to tech switch into Colossi as in PvP, but no, just keep building it. And if they stop building Void Rays, you win. So, that ties us up one game each, leading it to a fresh-ish slate for the next Game 3 of BlackBerry vs. Bungie.